I think what happens with these superhero figures that we have in our lives, like Dr. King and Rosa Parks, that we freeze them in a particular point in history. So we freeze Dr. King, for example, in 1963, and not just anywhere in 1963, not in Birmingham, for example, but at the March on Washington. We do the same with Jack Robinson. We freeze him on April 15th, 1947, and in that year. And this is the year when he soldiers on nonviolently. This is the year when he turns the other cheek. You're right, Siri. This is the year when he brushes the dust off his uniform and just soldiers on. We freeze him there, I think, because he's so safe for us. He's non-threatening. He doesn't uh, appear as a huge threat to white America. This is a man who is in some ways in his place, turning the other cheek to whites who have a menacing presence. But what we lose when we freeze him there is the real Jack Robinson. In 1947, he struggled mightily with turning the other cheek. If we just stick with 1947, the Dodgers are playing the Phillies and the manager of the Phillies, Ben Chapman, is hurling every racist taunt and jeer in Robinson's direction. And the bench at Chapman's urging joins in as well. And there's this point Robinson reflects later where he says that the great experiment of breaking the color barrier almost fails because he feels in that moment, like throwing down his bat, marching over to the dugout and taking what he calls his despised black fists and pummeling those white sons of you-know-whats. That's what he says in reflection. We miss that Robinson when we freeze him and the childhood books that I grew up with. We miss that Jack Robinson. We miss the aggression, the assertiveness, the ferocity he brought not only to the diamond, but especially to the fight for first-class citizenship for Black Americans after baseball. That says a lot for somebody who's still home played 19 times.